In the first part of this video essay, we looked at literature and films which involved doppelgangers from the 19th and early 20th century. In this second part, we will examine more modern films which involve doppelgangers. I hope you enjoy. Modern Films Let's take a look at doppelgangers in modern films. How has the use of doppelgangers in stories changed since its origins in early film and literature? The Double Life of Veronique, 1991 I would like to begin with the 1991 film The Double Life of Veronica, which is a Polish-French collaboration. This film is perhaps the most faithful to the original doppelganger folklore of all of the films which we will examine. The Double Life of Veronica tells the story of two women, one in Poland and one in France. The women appear to be exactly the same, in both name, appearance, and in personality and interests. The story begins in Poland, where the Polish woman, Veronica, is following her passion as a singer. One day, in Krakow, Veronica sees her counterpart, a French woman on a tour bus who is visiting Krakow. Following the encounter of her counterpart, Veronica mysteriously dies during a musical performance. Meanwhile, Veronique, the French woman, goes about her life oblivious of her counterpart, but begins to feel strange, as though the death of her double has affected her in some way, and we come to understand that there is some kind of a psychic connection between the two women. The double life of Veronica explores the idea of a doppelganger in its most surface terms. We are never delivered a resolution as to the meaning of the two identical women. In many ways, this film is the most faithful to the original doppelganger folklore that we have seen so far. In this usage of doppelganger folklore, the two women are definitely separate people. They are not two aspects of the same woman. And, like in the real-life doppelganger folklore, seeing one's own doppelganger is a herald of one's death. The film doesn't concern itself with explanations of this folklore, but instead it chooses to explore the coincidental nature of our lives, of the small events that can change or alter where life takes us. There are a surprising number of characters introduced, and their kindness or maliciousness seems to make all the difference to the course of the two Veronica's lives. Overall, I was hoping there was more to dig into with this film, but there really isn't as far as I can see. The film is surreal and impressionistic, and is more of an experience than a direct engagement with the idea of the doppelganger. Enemy, 2013 The Double, a novel from José Saramago, which prominently features the conflict between a man and his doppelganger, won the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1998, and a film adaptation of the novel, entitled Enemy, was produced in 2013. I will be mainly speaking about the film Enemy. Enemy concerns a history teacher, Adam, who, by chance, sees an actor in a film who exactly resembles him. Adam, after recovering from the shock of this discovery, resolves to find and meet this actor, whose name turns out to be Anthony. Adam, at first, stalks Anthony, and discovers where he lives and his phone number. Adam then calls Anthony's number and talks to his wife, who at first mistakes Adam for her husband, due to the similarity in voice, and is then disturbed when she discovers that Adam is not her husband. Adam eventually makes contact with Anthony, who eventually agrees to meet, although reluctantly. The two men meet in a hotel, and are fascinated and disturbed that they are completely identical, in every way. Adam feels that the meeting was a mistake. Anthony, however, is intrigued, and begins stalking Adam now, and in the process, sees Adam's girlfriend. Anthony then blackmails Adam into letting him assume his identity 
in order to sleep with his girlfriend. Adam unwillingly agrees, but decides to impersonate Anthony and visit his wife while Anthony is busy impersonating him. At the end of the film, Anthony and Adam's girlfriend are killed in a car crash while arguing. And Adam, after impersonating Anthony, ends up staying with Anthony's wife and assuming his identity. The film, despite having a relatively straightforward plot, defies understanding at first. There are bizarre sequences involving a giant tarantula, and the film opens with a scene involving an eyes-wide-shut style secret society of voyeurs. These scenes appear to be non-sequiturs at first. In addition to the strange scenes which we are shown in the film, the cinematography itself is also quite unsettling. Establishing shots slowly pan across a geometrical cityscape. Often we don't see the sky or the ground, forcing a feeling of disorientation on the audience. The film treads the thin line between several interpretations, constantly thwarting the audience's expectations and understanding. The main actor of the film, Jake Gyllenhaal, has stated that his interpretation is that the two men, Adam and Anthony, are one and the same, and that the film is about a man having an affair and being internally conflicted about his own behaviour. In this interpretation, we see the classic representation of the doppelganger as two aspects of a personality that cannot be reconciled. The man cannot accept responsibility for his actions, and therefore he compartmentalises the two aspects of his life, his married life and his affair. Clues in the film lend themselves to this interpretation. Adam's apartment is surprisingly cheap, almost empty of furniture except a bed, almost as if he rents this cheap apartment for the sole purpose of meeting his mistress. We hear Adam's mother reference his empty apartment early in the film, saying she can't understand how he lives like that, but then, later, she references the fact that he has a beautiful apartment. This discontinuity can only be explained by the reality of a single person with two apartments. Adam's mother also references that Adam cannot stick with one woman, although as far as we know, Adam himself is faithful to his girlfriend. Various other characters reference aspects of Anthony's life when talking to Adam or vice versa, confusing and disorienting the audience. As with many depictions of doppelgangers, the two doubles, Adam and Anthony, are radically different in personality and temperament. Adam is somewhat anxious and shy, but emotionally stable, while Anthony is outgoing, but volatile and insecure. The film is preceded by an epigraph which claims, Chaos is order yet undeciphered. While the film is at first confusing, it clearly has some sense to it. Another interpretation of the film is that there are in fact two men, who by freak coincidence look exactly alike. In the original novel, The Double, the two men learn that they share the same birthday, which seems to confirm that they are in fact the same person. The film Enemy carefully avoids either confirming or denying that the men are definitely one and the same by omitting this fact. In the third act of the film, we see the doubles switch places. Anthony blackmails Adam into letting him take his place, and Adam tentatively assumes Adam's place at his home with his wife. Many occurrences in the film cleverly lend themselves to two interpretations. When Adam impersonates Anthony, Anthony's wife asks him how his day was at school, which of course makes no sense because Anthony is not a teacher. If we are following the interpretation that the two men are in fact separate, then possibly Anthony's wife is letting Adam know that she is aware that he is not her husband, but she is okay with this. We have seen previously in the film that Adam is not a very caring or attentive husband, so it's not entirely unrealistic that Adam's wife would like Adam to take Anthony's place. 
If we follow the interpretation that the two men are one and the same, then it makes sense that Anthony's wife would ask him this, since he is in fact a teacher. So, we have two interpretations that could be correct. We still have the matter of the reoccurring symbol of the tarantula to contend with, though. What does this spider symbolize in the film? If we take the interpretation that the doubles are the same man, and he is struggling with the guilt of having an affair, then this spider likely represents the impetus for his personality splitting in the first place. The spider represents the division in his personality. In the final scene of the film, Adam encounters the spider when he is in Anthony's apartment, and he inexplicably sighs rather than being terrified by the event. If we follow the idea that the spider represents his internal conflict, then it makes sense that he would sigh. Once again, he is beset with desires and impulses which he is struggling to control. His internal conflict has reared its ugly head. The spider is first introduced to the film as part of a bizarre underground sex show which Adam attends. A naked woman appears on a stage in front of a crowd of men and she lets a tarantula loose on the stage, which she proceeds to crush with her high-heeled shoes. The attendance of this secret voyeuristic sex show is certainly something which Anthony would not want his wife to know about. It's a secret which he is hiding, a dirty and disturbing impulse which he had hidden within himself. Naturally, the spider comes to represent the impulses which he struggles to control. The division in his personality. If we consider that the two men are actually separate, then we are at a loss to explain this spider and its significance to both of the men. However, if these two men are one and the same, then this spider, as a symbol or as a memory, would exist in both of the men's minds. Even though the two aspects of the man's personality are separated, they share the memory of the spider. I actually have a third interpretation, which builds on the idea that there are actually two men in reality. My idea is much weirder than the first two interpretations. I think there could be an aspect of the story which we are missing, an outside force which was the reason for the two men existing in the first place. This could be a supernatural force creating these events, or some kind of cosmic being which is pulling the strings, or it could be as mundane as an experiment in cloning conceived by the government or a commercial organization. Regardless of the reason for the two men's identical appearance, this outside force could be what the tarantula represents, an unknown factor that is not explainable, but yet it propels the events in the story forward. I think this is an interesting theory or alternative interpretation, but I'm not convinced by my own argument. I really think the film lends itself to Gyllenhaal's own interpretation of the story. There is one man in conflict with himself, and he's having some kind of a mental breakdown. The Double, 2013 Let's take a look at another recent film, The Double, directed by Richard Ayoade. Richard Ayoade's modern take on Dostoevsky's novel of the same name is an interesting film in terms of its style and execution. Ayoade brings comedic elements, as one would expect from a comedian. But his interpretation also includes an unexpected setting, which pays homage to the source material. Instead of the highly restrictive Russian society, wherein social status and one's order in the social strata was a matter of obsession, Ayoade sets his story within the stifling environment of a modern-day office. The styling of the film lends itself to the interpretation that this film takes place in a dystopian version of the present day. In this adaption, we see the classic take on a doppelganger. A double appears which is the foil of our protagonist. This doppelganger embodies the opposite personality characteristics than that of our protagonist. Where the protagonist is shy, the doppelganger is bold and assertive. 
where the protagonist is uncertain, the doppelganger is certain. While the two characters, the protagonist and his double, initially cooperate, such as in the original novel, they are eventually set against one another, and the doppelganger surpasses the protagonist in his social life as well as work life. The end of the film moves towards the surreal, as our protagonist discovers that when he is hurt, so is his doppelganger. In this way, we are led to believe that these two men are one and the same. Here we see an echo of Poe's doppelganger from William Wilson, where, by injuring the doppelganger, the original person is injured. At this point in the film, Ayoade's interpretation and adaption of the double diverges from the source material. The fundamental question of the adaption is not whether the two characters are one and the same. We know that they are. The film story exists in a kind of unreality, where the doppelganger is literally the protagonist and also a separate person. Other characters simply act as if the doppelganger is a separate person, although he is a figment of the main character's imagination. In this story, the conflict with the doppelganger is an internal conflict. To overcome the doppelganger, our protagonist must become assertive, something which his doppelganger does without effort. The protagonist must begin to embody and master the aspects of his shadow self. Here, we see a more positive portrayal of the doppelganger. While many doppelganger stories end in disaster or mutual self-destruction, such as in William Wilson or The Enemy, in Eowade's The Double, we see the protagonist grow and develop on a journey of self-actualization, eventually resulting in a hopeful ending, which is in stark contrast to Dostoevsky's novel. Ultimately, Eowade produced a well-considered and thought-out adaption of Dostoevsky's novel, but also tweaked the story to make it a bit more palatable for modern audiences. In Dostoevsky's original novel, Golyadkin is on a downward slide. He is not able to overcome his doppelganger, or master the psychological conflict within himself. In Eowade's adaption, the protagonist is able to do this, and eventually overcomes his double. The One I Love, 2014 Surprisingly, there are several films about marriage and relationships which employ doppelgangers as an aspect of the plot. The One I Love is one of the stranger doppelganger films which we will discuss. The film is not strange because it evokes a sense of weirdness, such as many doppelganger stories do, but because of how it deploys the idea of doppelgangers and the questions that it provokes the audience to ask. The One I Love is a romantic comedy about a married couple, Ethan and Sophie, whose relationship is not going well. They are going to therapy to help improve their relationship, and during therapy, the marriage counsellor suggests they take a weekend away at a holiday house which he knows about. While staying at the house, the couple discover a guest house at the property, which, if they enter alone, they will encounter a doppelganger of their partner. If the couple enters together, there is no one there. The doppelganger, which each member of the couple encounters by themselves, is an exact copy of their partner, except missing the aspects of their partner's personality which they dislike. The doppelganger is essentially an idealized version of their partner. For Sophie, the doppelganger of Ethan, who she meets, is fun, relaxed, and carefree, exactly how she remembers Ethan when they first met. Ethan, however, is more suspicious of the doppelganger version of Sophie. At first, when the couple encounters the doppelgangers, they attempt to leave and ignore the bizarre event, but instead decide to return to the holiday house and explore the mystery. As the couple does this, Sophie begins to fall in love with the doppelganger version of her husband. Eventually, we unravel the mystery and discover that the doppelgangers are unable to leave the property. For reasons we never learn, the doppelgangers are bound to the property by some kind of a force field. They will only be able to leave if they succeed in driving a wedge 
between Ethan and Sophie. Then, when the relationship of Ethan and Sophie is destroyed, the doppelgangers can finally leave and Ethan and Sophie will be forced to take their place, bound to the property. At the end of the film, the real couple and the doppelgangers become confused as to who is who, and Ethan accidentally leaves the property with the doppelganger of Sophie rather than the real Sophie. The real Sophie seemingly wants to stay behind with the doppelganger who she has fallen in love with. In the final scene, we see a happy and playful conversation between Ethan and Sophie. They seem very much in love again. The problems of their marriage are apparently behind them now. But then Sophie says something which makes Ethan doubt if the Sophie with him is actually the real Sophie or the doppelganger Sophie, who has tricked him into setting her free from the property. Unlike some other examples of doppelgangers, the doppelgangers here are very literal, although they also serve a metaphorical purpose. The one I love is an investigation of sorts as to what it means to love somebody, and the questions it prompts are uncomfortable. If you could remove all the flaws from your partner, all the things you didn't like, would you? If you did, would they still be the same person then? the same one you fell in love with originally. If your partner only acted the way you wanted them to act, would you love them more or less? The one I love makes us ask ourselves what we would do in this situation. A reoccurring image in the film is a set of Russian dolls, the kind that fit inside one another. When asked which of the dolls Sophie likes most, she says the smallest one because it is so cute. The dolls are an effective representation of the main questions which are provoked by the film. People are complex and multi-layered. The film is asking us what is really important in a relationship, the outer appearance, the outside dolls, or what is at the core, the inner doll. The doppelgangers appear outwardly the same as the partners, but it is the inside that is important. For most of the film, the couple really believes that the doppelgangers are exact copies of themselves, until they discover that apparently they are another couple who have been somehow transformed to look and sound exactly like them. Sophie, in particular, really believes that Ethan's doppelganger is him, or at least a version of him. So did it really make a difference to the couple who was underneath the outside appearance? Sophie was apparently unable to tell that Ethan's doppelganger had a completely different personality to him. And at the end of the film, Ethan is seemingly unable to tell that Sophie's doppelganger is not her. At its core, the story is really about a couple who is drifting apart, a couple whose declining relationship is accelerated by the introduction of doppelgangers, which make them question if they really love one another. The doppelganger aspect of the story is really the catalyst which drives the plot forward and the reasons for the doppelganger's existence, why they are trapped at the property, or why any of this is happening at all, is never really addressed. But in the end, it's not important. While we can wonder at the forces at work in The One I Love, having an explanation would not change the story or stop us pondering the questions the film poses. The One I Love does not offer an answer to any of these questions, but rather lets the experience soak into our minds. Ethan and Sophie are faced with the choice of either committing to each other and accepting the flaws of their partner, or with replacing their partner with a copy who is exactly the same as their partner except without all the aspects they dislike. Sophie seems to choose the option of replacing Ethan while Ethan is devoted to the real Sophie. As the lies and betrayals start to stack up throughout the film, the situation becomes more and more disturbing, and the knife's edge on which the couple's relationship balances becomes more apparent. Eventually, the film comes down to a choice of either staying with one's partner or moving on to a new relationship. We see this culminate in the characters choosing between their real partner and a doppelganger, which is eerily similar to the situation in Enemy, 
where Anthony's wife may choose the doppelganger of her husband over her real husband. The one I love never reaches an exact conclusion, it never answers the questions which it poses, but it leaves a lasting impression, and much like the characters in the film, we are left with a basketful of questions about what loving someone actually means. Annihilation, 2018 In the film Annihilation, we see another romantic relationship which involves doppelgangers, although distinctly darker than the one I love. At its core, Annihilation concerns the troubled relationship between a husband and wife. The husband, who works in the military, takes part in a suicidal mission to explore a preternatural manifestation in the wilderness, a place known as Area X, during which he disappears. The wife, unaware of the details of her husband's classified work, knows only that he has disappeared. After the wife gives up her husband as being dead, he shockingly reappears in their house one day. Although the wife is overjoyed to see her husband, she quickly realizes that something is wrong. Either his personality has changed, he is a shadow of his former self, or this man, who appears to be her husband, is actually not. After the husband reappears, the military quickly takes the husband into custody for unknown reasons. The military then approaches the wife and proposes that she joins a team conducting the same exploratory mission that her husband undertook. The wife agrees, and during this journey she learns the truth. The man who returned to her was not her husband, but a copy, somehow produced either through super-advanced technology or supernatural forces. The wife herself confronts the force which created this doppelganger, and herself is copied, and comes face to face with her mirror self. At the end of the film, we are unsure if the woman who returns from Area X is the true woman or the doppelganger. While the film can be read as a science fiction story, the subtext is more interesting than the surface plot. We learn that the people who volunteer for the mission into Area X are those who have lost all hope. There is a terminal cancer patient, a suicidal person, the refuse of the military. The implications this makes about Area X are clear. This is a place that heralds the end for those who enter. It is a place that attracts those with no hope and no future. We learn the reasons for the husband's self-destructive journey into Area X. The husband discovered that his wife was unfaithful. Presumably, this fact was never discussed or acknowledged by the couple, at least not that we see. Devastated by this discovery, the husband volunteers to enter Area X. Equally devastated by the loss of her husband, the wife follows, in a perhaps hopeless attempt to repair their relationship, or at least achieve closure. The reasons for entering Area X is the unresolved issues within the relationship. The doppelgangers which emerge from Area X are equally representative of these issues. These doppelgangers are their shadow selves, the unseen, unacknowledged underbelly of the couple's marriage. Area X is a place of supernatural and surreal changes, a dream world, a place where people confront themselves and their feelings. Both the husband and the wife enter Area X, and they must encounter and struggle with their doppelgangers, their unresolved trauma, pain and marital problems, their internal conflict. Interpreted another way, the appearance of doppelgangers within a romantic setting could represent the growing apart of the partners, the separation process. While the couple may have once had a connection, they now feel like strangers to each other. The doppelganger could represent this process. The couple have literally grown into other people, who feel like copies, doubles, replacements. The following conclusions which the film presents are dark. None of the characters in the film end up in a better position than when they started. All of the characters either perish in Area X, or emerge more damaged than at the start of the film. 
the events which precipitate the mission into Area X have forever changed the couple and their relationship. There is no repairing this relationship, only living with the uncomfortable pain and hopelessness, and confronting the consequences of their actions. The only thing left for the couple to do is to live in the ruins of their relationship, as estranged shadows of their former selves. Every character in the film is on a progressive downward slide into the abyss. Area X itself is gradually expanding and encroaching on the world, implying the eventual destruction of life as we know it, leaving us with an overwhelming sense of dread. The pessimistic and doomed tone of Annihilation is reminiscent of many doppelganger stories. One cannot escape one's fate. It is predetermined. To meet our doppelganger is to ensure our doom. Our flaws, our shadow selves, our impulses, the things which the doppelganger embodies and represent, destroy us. Possession, 1981 Another film which uses doppelgangers as a medium to analyse and explore relationships is the 1981 film Possession. Possession tells the story of a husband and wife, Mark and Anna, whose relationship is breaking down. The film begins as a drama, with long scenes involving the couple fighting and the breakdown of their relationship. As the film progresses, however, it turns into something completely different. Behind the drama, we see bizarre, almost supernatural events taking place. Mark encounters a doppelganger of Anna at his son's school. Anna begins to spend more time alone at a secret apartment where she is nurturing some kind of monstrous being. As Mark and others begin to unravel the mysteries surrounding Anna, their lives spiral out of control. Mark murders Anna's lover and discovers the hideous secret that Anna is hiding. Eventually, the being that Anna is creating or feeding grows to maturity and assumes the exact form of Mark. It becomes a doppelganger of Mark and seems to want to replace him. Division is a constant theme throughout the film. There is the division of one's personal and work life. The reason for the initial decline in Mark and Anna's relationship was Mark's work life, and Mark quits his job in an attempt to reunite his two lives. There is division in the relationship between Mark and Anna. Mark and Anna decide to break up and must negotiate the custody of their son. The film also takes place in Berlin, which, at the time, was divided by the Berlin Wall. Anna's life and time is divided between her husband and her lover, and eventually the monster. A strong undercurrent in the film is the sex life of the couple. Mark is highly insecure about Anna's sexual fulfillment and his inability to provide it, or the idea that someone else could provide this. The discovery of Anna's secret lover sends him into a spiral of jealousy. Mark is obsessed by comparing himself to Heinrich, Anna's lover. He is tormented by the idea that he is inferior to Heinrich. Perhaps most disturbing of all is that Anna has sex with the monster and is apparently highly satisfied by her experience. The fact that the monster assumes the appearance of Mark and appears to be a superior lover for Anna makes the monster the ultimate replacement for Mark. The monster, or doppelganger, is a superior copy of Mark, and presumably Anna's ideal partner. Possession, while being a radically different film to The One I Love, has similar themes. The idea of being replaced in a relationship by a superior lover who is an exact double is a commonality between both films, although the tone of the film could not be further apart. In both Possession and The One I Love, doppelgangers are the embodiment of the fear of being replaced as a partner, the fear that one's partner will leave you for a better person, a superior lover, a more cultured and emotionally balanced person. Annihilation and Possession also have a similar tone in terms of the pessimistic 
and doomed atmosphere which prevails in both films. The relationships in Annihilation and Possession are also similar. They are broken beyond repair, and the characters within the films are in a slow spiral into mutual destruction. The inspiration for Possession was the director and writer, Andrzej Zhuravsky's own divorce. Some of the scenes in the film are almost direct recreations of things which he experienced, and no doubt the emotional undertones of the film, jealousy and the fear of being replaced, were similarly inspired. With Possession, we see, more prominently than in other doppelganger films, the fear of replacement being explored in the context of a relationship. Doppelgangers provide the medium by which this theme can be explored. Ultimately, watching the film Possession is a harrowing experience. The film constantly shocks the audience with how horrible the relationship between Anna and Mark is. And in addition to this, the inclusion of the supernatural and horror elements make the film a horribly emotionally draining experience to watch. Of all the films that we will look at in this analysis, Possession is the most harrowing. It's truly a horrifying experience, and perhaps best represents the atmosphere of pervading doom, which is so often associated with the appearance of a doppelganger in stories. Us, 2019 The last film I will examine is one of the most recent and unique takes on doppelgangers in a film. Jordan Peele's Us takes a completely different approach to the idea and folklore of doppelgangers than any of the other films we have examined so far. In truth, I think it's the most unique take on doppelganger folklore that I've seen, and in fact one of the only recent films which has added and expanded to doppelganger folklore in the recent decades. In Us, we see a family who is being terrorized by their doppelgangers at their holiday house, and eventually learn that it is not just them that is being threatened, but in fact society as a whole. We eventually learn that literally every person in society has a doppelganger, and that doppelganger's one goal is to find them and kill them. Jordan Peele's film, Us, uses doppelgangers as a metaphor for wealth and privilege. The doppelgangers here represent those who have nothing. They are stuck in poverty. We discover that the doppelgangers in the film are a result of an attempt by the government to find a way to control the population. Exact copies of every person are cloned at birth and are psychically linked somehow with their counterpart. These doppelgangers, which we come to learn are called the tethered, are kept underground, and are apparently mostly unable to speak, and normally communicate using animalistic noises. All of the positive or pleasurable aspects of normal people existing above ground are mirrored as horrible torture in their below-ground counterparts, the tethered. The events of the film take place when the tethered organize an attack on the people living above ground. Jordan Peele's take on doppelgangers uses doppelgangers as a metaphor for wealth and privilege. The doppelgangers in Us represent those who have nothing, who are stuck in poverty and exploited for the pleasure of their counterparts. We could think of the tethered as being the underprivileged people who support the life of the privileged and wealthy. When we look at the structure of our modern world, we see that the Western world has cheap electronics, clothes and products, which are all created by the third world. The prices of these products can be kept low because they are created using exploited labor forces in the third world, who, for their labor, are paid a fraction of what the product is eventually sold for. The cost of our comfort is the discomfiture of other human beings behind closed doors in factories and sweatshops across the other side of the globe. Often we are oblivious of this fact, or simply choose to not think about it. Peel brings this idea into stark reality when the tethered 
organized to exit the underground and kill and replace their above-ground counterparts, and assume their places. The theme of poverty and privilege is introduced in the film in the very first scenes. The film begins by introducing a 1986 fundraising event called Hands Across America. This was an event organized to raise money for charities to support less fortunate people in the United States of America. We are shown up front the stark contrast between people who have wealth and those who do not. At the end of the film, the tethered attempt to recreate Hands Across America as a sign of protest, a sign that the inequality between the people above ground and the tethered has got to stop. Us is a story about the dangers of ignoring inequality in society and the potential repercussions for it, but also about the dark side of our modern lives. Rather than an individual's doppelganger representing the dark side of that person, in us we see the entire society mirrored in a shadow nation, a shadow society, an embodiment of the sins of society which rises up and exacts its revenge on its counterpart. Conclusion Doppelgangers, as a literary tool, are implicitly understandable by the audience. They are both a metaphorical method of exploring a person's psyche and also a literal force within the story which pushes the plot forward. We as the audience can relate to the conflict between two aspects of a character's personality being represented by two separate people, a person and their double. Although there are many films about characters who are in conflict with themselves, none handle this in such a vivid and involved way as stories which involve a doppelganger. The idea of a doppelganger, when handled correctly, can be a powerfully engaging plot element. And, as we have seen, the concept of a doppelganger can be utilized in a wide range of stories to represent a wide range of things. We see commentaries on poverty and exploitation in the film Us. We see doppelgangers provoking questions as to the nature of love in The One I Love. In Enemy and The Double, we see the doppelganger used to question if a person can grow and develop and leave aspects of their personality behind. And in Annihilation and Possession, we see doppelgangers represent the unresolved pain and issues in a marriage. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video essay.